week two, Dan. We made week two. See, we made it to week two. For all the doubters that said it was only ever going to be a one-week thing. All the haters. All the haters. We did have some hate this week, Dan. We had some hate. On TikTok. I feel like I'm... I just get myself. Smart cash. Smart cash. Okay, Dan, you get yourself um, Yes. Uh, I, think we, I think we should call out the hate first. Let's call out the haters and then we'll spread the love. Yeah, yeah, It'd yeah. It'd be like a hate sandwich. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> um, what was the hate? It said... Um, I can't find it, but it said something like, who wants to listen to two randomers podcast? Uh, it was my dad. It was. <laughs> <laughs> he's got a point to be he's, fair. He's got a point, yeah. you know, um, that it was a point well made. And that is, that is the unfortunate nature of, of TikTok. It, it yeah, serves yeah. your videos directly out to people. Ironically, this guy had, I think, more than one video which is just him eating a sandwich I really, I really, you know? <laughs> so yeah, it wasn't Paul Letworth it wasn't Paul Letworth <laughs> um, welcome one and all we're back week two how's your week, week been two. Dan tell, tell me about what, it's what been, have you been up to uh, it's been a good week um, last week well actually I'm going to give someone a shout out and then uh, I'll segue into what I was doing last week um, so last week we were, well this, this podcast is quite off the cuff um but we forgot to shout someone out, and that was Charlie. <laughs> so, so let's have a let's. I'm going to shout out Charlie. Charlie has been our studio manager for uh, the past ten, ten all the years. way back to Limehouse. Yeah. I think I, I think the latter days of Limehouse. So it's going to say 2011, 2012, um, and now she's got a big job, a real job, big a big grown up job at Metropolis. <laughs> yeah. As Good luck, Charlie. Head, Thanks for everything. Head yep. of everything. Um, so a lot of my last last week was um, just being a studio manager, um, you know, which is the cut and thrust of of uh, yeah. what we do here at Chin. We've been busy this week, right? Yeah. So we had a session in with an art. We decided we're not going to name the artists yeah. who were in the studio, but we had a very successful session Monday, Tuesday. And this morning, we've just had a video shoot. Uh, I say this morning because it is the afternoon here. Um, we had to switch things around. We... We, but we did it again. On we're, we're we're on a Monday. It's happening. Um, so it's Monday afternoon. I had to get in early to do a mix treat with someone, and then we had a video shoot, which was busy. Shoots are always very busy um, for a major record company. Can I go off on a tangent now? Go on off a tangent. I, I've got a a question to ask you. Mm. So I've been I've been essentially mixing for the last three weeks. Yeah, and I've never done as much mixing in one go mm -hmm. as as I had the like like three weeks worth of mixing. Man, my I don't know if and I wanted to ask you mm. if you get this my ears get tired. Yeah. Right? And it manifests itself in I become very fucking sensitive to all sounds. Yeah. I'm having to sleep with earplugs. Oh um, interesting. Okay. Yeah. Just just I'm just hypersensitive to like any sound. Mm. And um Car brakes are annoying. Like anything, buses. I just, I, I, you know, eight, nine hours of mixing. I leave the studio, and I just want to just turn the world down. Yeah. Do you? Does this happen to you? Um, it was historically mixed more than I. I wouldn't say so to that extent. No. Um, I definitely feel You're not working hard enough, then, mate. Exactly. Yeah. Have you set the timer, by the way? Oh, you shit. Set the timer. Yeah. No, I haven't. But I will. I'll set it. <laughs> no, I'll set it for like twenty-five minutes. Yeah. Now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Um. Well, I I don't find that, but I definitely I definitely feel it in my I feel it physically in my ears. Um, not not pain or discomfort or anything, but I just notice the you know the it's like after you've exercised a lot, you yeah. know, you're you need some recovery time. Um, and I also find that my attention span will kind of burn out. Oh, totally. You know what I mean? Like I'm not yeah. gonna. I'm not going to do sort of a nine, ten hour mixing day and then go home and sort of read Dostoevsky or something, you know, sure. in, in the original. I, 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 find, I find, so I know we, we were talking about this the other day, but the difference in work rate, for, for me at least, between a writing session, a mixing session and a production session. For me, a writing session and a mix session has to be relatively short. I say relatively short. A writing session is short. Six mm. hours. If you don't have a song in six hours, I think you've got to step away. Mm -hmm. For for me, at mix after eight hours, I I really don't know where North is anymore. Yeah, 
for a production session, I can do up to 12. That's okay. Okay, interesting. But like, but I was gonna say, I, I don't know how, like I've spoken to, to like, you know, mixes like, like Ben Bapti, who can like mix for like 14 hours. Yeah. Dude, how do you? It's, it's the hair, it's the hair. <laughs> Um, it just, fight. It just it just tames the top ben, end. Yeah, Ben 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 Bapti, For those of you who don't know, uh, it's a great mix, and and you should. He's an excellent mixer, uh, based very close to where our old studio used to be, and he has the most magnificent great hair, Ben. Yeah, and a great mixer. But yeah. I I just don't know how. I don't know if it's experience or. Well, I, yeah, I don't know. So like, obviously, if say, I mean, you and I don't really do many sessions together anymore no but i feel like when we used to do sessions before uh, together kind of back in sort of 24 like you know, laura marling album or something yeah yeah laura marling album is a bit of an exception because the, the i was oh, well, I'm talk, what i'm getting onto is pacing right and no one knows how to pace a studio session better than laura marling yeah <laughs> <laughs> lunch lunch yeah exactly um so I guess yeah, the, the, oh, no, are you going at like we essentially when someone would get tired that another person jumps in well that's often yeah I mean if you're working with a set of musicians which is pretty much any a ba- either a band or a solo artist who has a band um, yeah everyone tags in yeah uh, you know we do a bit of bass now we're going to do some drums now I, I personally I find it more stimulating to switch to kind of keep switching things up yeah. rather than do a whole day of drums um yeah and then like a whole day of bass or something Not yeah you can really do a whole day of bass really doesn't seem to make much sense you know but um but the i find when i'm engineering in that scenario that is pretty ex- you know i'm exhausted by the end of the day yeah, that's a good um, point because that's... because of that, everyone's tag teaming in, but you you're still in you're in the hot seat the whole the whole time, you know. Yeah, and I guess but I guess when you're mixing, it's like just you you mm. you tend to be, you know, most mixes now are, are not attended. Yeah. I was chatting to Matt Colton, mm. great mastering engineer. For those of you mm. you don't know, Dan and I work work with him a lot. We, we try we try and work with him, but he's he's, he's very he's, busy. He's so good that he he's <laughs> so good that he's incredibly busy. Yeah. Um so uh, you, you can't sort of uh, get him to do something tomorrow anymore. But like he 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 can pull a long day. And, yeah. and and last time I was with him, I was like, you know, how do you keep it do you keep perspective? He says he he said that he doesn't do any EQing after a certain time. Right. <laughs> like okay, so all of the and I, that I know because yeah, I just don't know why I'm hearing after after a certain amount mm-hmm. of time. Yeah, you know, I mean, I, I definitely, I'm a bit of a fidgety person, so I do when I'm when well, I'm I, mixing. I, I don't think you're that fidgety, can Dan. Be, can, I can be, can yeah. be. Um, I definitely try and move around when I'm mixing, as in like not constantly, but if I've if I've been sat there, kind of with intense focus on something for for 40 minutes or so i do after you know it's as soon as i feel like my attention's not quite tuned in i tend to just stand like maybe yeah. i'll just i'll just jump it back to the beginning of the track stand up walk step step back step away from the controls yeah um and you know listen switch up the perspective that's that, a- that's how i kind of keep that's how i kind of keep things fresh well i do that by Putting stuff on my AirPods and going for a walk, yeah, and just checking levels. Mm-hmm. I want. I wonder what a, a standing studio would be like if everything was standing height. You I know, like, like in these offices, or if you could yeah. imagine, you could just raise everything up. Well, Carly, so could... Carly's got a desk that does that. Has she? Yeah, yeah. She's Carly Paradis up in one of our studios. Yeah, um, she's got. Because uh, I remember, because I helped her move her stuff in, and I was like, "What is that? Why does your desk have?" electronics on it you know <laughs> and it's so that it can actually i've never so do, do the speakers go up as well uh i've not actually seen it deployed i'm gonna have to see this yeah let's go and uh yeah fuck this let's just go but i know. wonder i wonder if i don't know if you could surely a standing mix would affect the mix the maybe you'd be more assertive you know, the, i don't know would it if i wonder if it would affect it i don't know i'm gonna have to try because it would be easier but the entire Control room in Studio A on stilts, or just do a bit. No, build a trench. 
A trench. A trench. Oh, it's three, so you yeah, 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 yeah. Now it. that's three dimensional thinking, Matthew. Yeah. yeah. Why go up when you can go down? Why go down? Yeah. But let's I, just dig a hole in our floated floor. Perfect. I wonder if it would help with kind of concentration span. Mm. If you're standing because you're kind of more engaged, you're less less likely to slouch. It's, it's hard to know. I don't think I don't feel like that would engage me, but I would definitely, you know, I wouldn't rule it out. Um, I like I say, I I like to. I'm not someone who can sit there for three hours, mouse in hand, you know, and edit. And yeah, as 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 we occasionally discuss, you know, mi mixing often involves some editing. Yeah. Can um, you do automation with a mouse? Uh, well, n n no, I don't think not. Not. What do you use? Not very often. Your, I either. Your your ears. I use use my, use, use, use my, ear, my ears. That's the only mixed tip you need. Um, I I think I draw I draw kind of triangular curves with the mouse sometimes, you know. But, so, um, but you, I'm so, not saying I would never throw a Pro Tools fader into into touch and click and yeah. But but not not generally. But you know we've got in Studio A we have got a a little fader pack that we rarely use. But I do I, I use that because it's there. You know, I've just been automated with a mouse for so long now. Yeah, it would feel feels felt horrible at first. Yeah, and now I just like well, it's practice, isn't it? <laughs> it's a bit like if someone yeah. if someone sits down at a drum kit and tries to play drums for the first time. That's pretty horrendous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just, yeah, absolutely. Or any instrument. Um. So yeah, I I don't think, but it's interesting what you know the the walk since we moved to Hackney Wick. The walk around the block. I think it's in both of our routines now. I don't know if it's in anyone else's. Yeah, let us know. What's the what's the the email address? That it's people a can... podcast at urchinstudios.co.uk. That's podcast at urchinstudios.co.uk. We'd, we'd, we'd really like to hear from you. We'd really like to hear from you. Um, but I think it's our equivalent of the car test. Yes, you know. And if you if if you're like me and you follow a lot of producers on. On life, for for what it's worth, sometimes it it drives me nuts following people's tips and tricks. Yeah, um, and it's not that I know them all; I know most of them. Um, a, a lot of them are wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, can we can we but, can, can we can we just dwell on that? For, sorry to yeah. interrupt you. I, I'm obviously not going to name any lanes, but mm. sometimes you you know something pops off on your feed. It's just like. The only thing you need to know as a mixer is this. Mm. And it's just some bullshit. Some bollocks about some it. Some bollocks it's just about some like, EQ curve that it's yeah. the, here's here's my secret sauce. Or like, yeah. Only ever use slow attack, fast release. Never you oh, what I don't know. Whatever. It can be whatever. It's just like wow. There's but I, but at the same time, I don't I don't want to block any of these people because I think as a mixer, producer, engineer, whatever, you've always got to have You've always got to be open-minded, despite the the sea of toss, which often is thrown your way. Because every so often, someone's tip is like, "Wait, wait, of of course! Oh my god, I never thought of it like that." But usually, or, usually those ones that come up on your feed are say, like, "Hey guys, if you're yeah. do you do you Swipe know you do you know you're compressing wrong? Swipe away. They're always shit. I mean, saying that, I have got some. <laughs> Saying that, turned out I was compressing yeah. wrong. <laughs> I hadn't turned it. It was in bypass. I didn't realise. <laughs> Is your compressor in bypass? <laughs> no. Um, I, I, I have got some really good tips from socials, but they're not the ones that pop up. Spons they're not the sponsored ones. They're just... No. The they're just like Andrew Shack's are... talking fucking sense about something. Yeah. Or you're going, that's a good idea. And also, do, do, you, know, do you not find that any tips that I pick up on social media tend to be more conceptual than those are the best ones yeah like yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. you it, know it, it's either that end of it where it's just like here's a here, next time you're doing a session or writing a song try and think about it this way or have you ever thought about considering this or have you tried starting with the such and such those are they're a bit like oblique strategies cards or something yeah um the one i really the, the really great mix advice i think about quite a lot i, I really do think about it a lot I think it's Bruce Swiden, you know, the Michael Jackson engineer. Uh -huh. Didn't he say that you can, there can only ever be three prominent things? Yeah. So vocal, snare, and riff, or whatever. Yeah. 
and keep everything else in the background. And mm. then at any one time, there can only that's good advice. You can move them. You can move them they around. They can move around. To the, yeah, to, like, I, for the for, for the for the but because I tend to think that sometimes you just turn everything up. It's yeah. Like, why isn't this working? Yeah. Where's well, the space? As as a as a mixer, I uh, and this is going to sound so pretentious. It's so pretentious. But it's fucking true. Got it. I'm there to help the artist tell a story. Oh fuck you. <laughs> you know? So yeah, that, no, I know what you mean. But what I, I mean what I mean by that it, <laughs> the, the the technical not not the technical side of that is but you know the song song usually starts with an intro maybe a chorus or whatever but as you move through the sections of the song there you've got to guide the listener's ear yeah as to what they're supposed to be listening to and the arrangement almost always tells you what that should be but it just means it just and it, that's that's a it's it's balance on its basic most basic level it's just things like if you're moving from a chorus into a middle eight which has got a guitar solo i mean this is a very traditional way of describing it or whatever a, a pop song which has an instrumental hook. Yep. It's got to feel like the lead vocal hands over to the lead instrument. Yes. And the balance and proportion of those instruments to each other has to, it, it, it often the margin's quite quite thin. It's kind of a couple of dB or even half a dB or or whatever. Um and that's not to be underestimated. You know, I think when you've got we were kind of alluding to this a little bit last last week when we were talking about having all the tools at your disposal. Yes. And masses of plugins, especially if you've got UAD installed, where it just Gives you the obliterates more. your entire screen yeah. with plugins. I don't like that UAD. No, no. We, we like UAD. We love, we love UAD, UAD but... stuff, but um, the fact that it installs every plugin that you don't have is a nuisance. It's, it's visual clutter, and it's, yeah. it doesn't help your workflow. But, yeah. um, but that aside... But yeah, because there's so many tools to correct stuff now, it, it can, I find I constantly um, stepping into and back from taking things too far in terms of just moderating everything. You know what I mean? Did we talk about this last week, Dan? That's very, that, that's very interesting where, I don't know if we did or not, where I find sometimes I overcomplicate things and actually... It, 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 it is the thing. It's just balance. Yeah. Just maybe your maybe your vocal just needs to come down two dB. Maybe that's the problem rather than right. Yeah. If I side chain the bass to the tambourine, yeah. and then you know yeah. whatever. Did I and say this you, last week? No, no. Okay. We, we didn't. Been, we didn't really talk about music. I was. I've been thinking about this. The the the, the yeah. The answer is often just in the back in the fucking back in, in the, the mix, balance in the balance of things rather I think than that it might being be the name of the episode in the balance. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, Right, how are we doing for time? Ten minutes left. Okay, ten minutes left. Do you want to? I want to. I want to bring in two, two maybe two regular. Okay. Things. Yeah. What like? What are we listening to this week? Mm -hmm. Song of the week, and maybe plugin of the week as well. Yeah. Let's talk about song of the week first. Okay. Oh, by the way, I wasn't going to talk about this, but yeah. the new Dua Lipa song. I haven't heard it yet. Oh, it's fucking good. Well, there we go. It's really good. <laughs> I mean, that's obviously like low hanging fruit. Do you know, you know, you know, you sometimes you hear a song and you're just like, on first listen, you're just like, oh, that's a fucking hit. Yeah. It's really yeah, good. Yeah, also, yeah. I've got a seven year old daughter. Yeah. And it's just like, we listen to it together and we've literally been listening to it all weekend. What? Um, it's what? really good. And it's it, um, the, the team of people um, uh, involved in it, Tame and Parlor's co producer. Amazing. Um, I, it, what's his name? Oh, so not Tame and Parlor himself, but. What, the fucking, who is Tame and Parlor? Oh, my, my tiny brain. Yeah. What's his name? Just not Justin. No, that, that's Bon Iver, I think. Yeah, yeah, I'm thinking of Bon Iver. Yeah. Tame and Parlor. Just call him Tame and Parlor. Anyway, it's sorry. We all know so the guy. A, we all yeah. know the. And you can really hear his, you know, fingerprints. His input. Oh, but it's just a, it's just an absolute scorcher. Was that just out on Friday? Out on Friday. How did I miss that? Do you know? Mm. Um, Get uh, out of your cave, man. Out of my cave. Um, yeah, I. You know, I. I actually don't have a new tune to um to come to sort of hey everyone check out this new tune but i had a little moment the other day Go on. um with uh um bob marley uh don't worry but i sing every little thing yeah that one i had i had a sudden i didn't really listen to reggae that much 
but I know I had a just the groove and the pocket. Great. So the you know when you just sort of yeah you know, like I, I've been I've been listening to the hits of Bob Marley since um, since I was definitely paying for my downloads as a teenager yeah. and definitely wasn't using LimeWire to obtain my music. It's just in the ether, Bob Marley, isn't it? It's just it's just it's like the Beatles. It's just there. Exactly, it's and, everywhere. And, and and the similar sort of thing can happen with with like Beatles tunes, or yeah, something, yeah, yeah, where they're just always in. They're in the background of so many. Yeah, Abba, Queen, all those bands yeah. are just there. And then so every so often, like it, same same with Abba. Abba's a good one to just kind of have a have a moment and just go like, I'm just going to listen to this song that I know. I feel like I know really well. Yeah, yeah. And and some sometimes you just something weird clicks and you just hear the song in an entirely different way and it kind of like yeah it's like that's the matrix and it all sort of expands and you suddenly go like i never thought about how that that what the drummer's actually playing so there. so what was it about the bob marley song that was that kind of brought you in pocket and groove yeah and such like you know and and i sort of my my inclinations in terms of kind of like um do you know what? That's the doorbell, and it might be the beer delivery. <laughs> okay, we're going to pause this. I think we're going to have to pause that. Okay, I'll... it might not be. But... So, okay, we had a beer delivery. Now we're back. Yeah. Um, Do beer you know delivery what, for, what... Our, for our Christmas party. Yes, I'm just going to pop a little, little sink click in. Okay, because I made uh, I made a right uh, pig. I didn't make a pig zero. The adding the video to the audio last week yeah but there was no sync point so, ah right, right, right. Um, okay uh, but let's go back to right so the Bob you're saying Bob Marley mm. um, yeah so what I was saying was that my sort of even though I've been listening to Bob Marley since a teenager my sort of I don't know my I, I always think like the music that you listen to as a teenager becomes part of your musical DNA. Yeah. You know, and so for me, a lot of that was kind of Nirvana and Pixies and uh, Sonic Youth and Radiohead. And obviously there is groove content in that, but it's not in the same way that yeah. a reggae groove I, I kind would, of bops. I, I would say that, that some, as a drummer as well, those that Bob Marley band, Mm. Had a really specific swing, yeah. Like it's really fucking specific. Well, that that was that was the thing. That that was the sort of the thing that I just suddenly had this kind of like, oh, oh, it's like that, and it's totally intangible. But yes, it's just that sort of sense of you're you're always learning a bit more about music, you know. And it was just like something, just I, I kind of leveled up in my understanding. <laughs> So, you know, it was like in a, in a game when you sort of level up your XP. Yes. I sort of had little XP. Yes. I hit a new level of yes. my understanding of what groove meant. Or just, you, I guess you're noticing something. I, yeah. I, I had something similar. And in, I couldn't, it wouldn't, I couldn't play it. You know, I mean, but, very few people can. I mean, yeah. it's like a really specific, I think, to, to that thing. I had a similar thing where I went on tour um, and I was with a load of musos and we were listening mm. to like, I like Aphex Twin and like loads of, Everyone had their sort of muso hats on and it yeah. was great. Yeah. But then we went from listening to to, to, to like Aphex and and like a lot of walk record stuff to ABBA. Mm. And we and I never listened to ABBA with my like music, like geeky music right. head on. And mm. it fucking stands up. He was just like Yeah. We, we, with a load of music, just like God, this bass playing. Like it's out like yeah. the musicianship involved on those. And you think, God, you know it. And so, and you're saying about the stuff that's part of your musical DNA sometimes you're not as um, objective or observant about the nuances of that music because it's just been around you all the time. Yeah, 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 so, exactly, so, yeah. It, yes, I don't know, but I, I'm, 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 I'm yeah. with you. Sometimes something from my childhood comes up that I yeah. haven't heard for 20 years mm. and you're like, oh, that's rubbish. But sometimes you're like, fuck, this slays. Yeah. This so, is amazing. So I actually have a thought. Uh, here's a question, if you don't mind discussing this. So... You just mentioned a couple of minutes ago that you've been listening to music with your daughter. Yes. So what is kind of, do you feel that as a, do you feel, what's she, seven? Right? Seven, yeah. What's her, you know, is there something, is her kind of reaction to music kind of like 
more naive than what we're talking about? Or yeah. Is it, or, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And it's and and there's definite reactions, and it, yeah. it's it's either this is good or this is bad. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. You know what I mean? And yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. I play. Which her, is a really. It's res- lovely. A great way I mean, of she, thinking she, about music. She, you know? She's you know she's a seven year old girl, so she likes a lot of pop. Mm-hmm. I think there's just music that's exciting. Yeah. You know, like it's funny, like the first time she heard the Spice Girls, mm. she was five, five or six. Yeah. And there's something about that band, and it's obviously why they were so big. Mm. The moment she heard like Wannabe by Spice Girls, it was like instant, like, what is this? Yeah. This is great. Yeah. It's like catnip for like the under 10s. Yeah. Spice Girls. It's just, they they just got something that's, and, it could, and, and you listen to it and it's really fun. Mm. And I think she responds to music that's upbeat and fun. Yeah, I, I play her stuff, right, that I'm working on. Mm. And I do a lot of singer-songwriter stuff. Mm. And sometimes she says, Daddy, why do they have to be so sad? <laughs> <laughs> You're like, yeah, she's pretty yeah, it's sad. A, it's, a great, it's a great question. It's pretty sad. So yeah. she, she doesn't have much time for things that are sad. Yeah. Um, but she's got me into quite a lot of music because they listen to music at their playground at school. Okay, interesting. And she's like, have you heard this song, Believer? And I'd not buy like Imagine Dragons. Right, okay. Which is not a massive yeah. song, but yeah. it's fucking brilliant. Well, yeah, I mean, great, there, great there, is, there is so much, you know, the, I don't know if you found this as well when you were a teenager that I was fairly, um, you know, there's not so, there are music scenes around nowadays, but they're a little bit, little bit different and i wouldn't i wouldn't say i was like part of a scene but it was definitely quite narrow-minded as part of it but i was quite blinkered in my sense of as is as a teenager obviously my sense of like what genres i kind of wanted to listen to and i think to a point there was a as a sense of what i should be listening to i think i was like that you know to a certain extent yeah and i i don't think that um I don't think that sort of channeling of kind of that single mindedness staring down a particular sliver of a genre, like, you know, people you know, there were people who I grew up with that only listened to new metal for right. whatever two years until such things became less kind of fashionable or, or wore out as, you know, genres yeah, yeah. change. But I think nowadays, um, you know, particularly when you're working with pe- artists in their early twenties or so, I feel like they're listening to a much, much broader range of music than I was. You know, I was just download. I was just downloading, obviously, songs that I was paying for, or definitely wasn't. Yeah, and that's probably yeah, something to free, do. With, that's that probably been... something to do with streaming. You know, I think so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Also, I, I, I mean, I've, I know we've talked about this before, but the way that when I first started music, I started making music. So twenty, twenty five years ago, mm. there were definite sounds mm-hmm. that were like no go so uh like slap based yeah um yeah, i still they, maintain that rule to this day actually. yeah maybe <laughs> uh like you know gated like that phil collins drum sound was just yeah. like no yeah. there were just chorus on guitar Boo. just not cool whereas now there doesn't seem to, in the the sort of younger people that i'm working with that that and it's probably to do with streaming they just see the whole of like musical history as just this mm thing that they choose what they like from yeah and there doesn't seem to be any which is cool man it's a buffet it's a buffet it? and we're gonna yeah. have that fra- that billy holiday vocal sound yeah with this sound from the police i i think the, I don't know, the, the only thing i would say at the moment though is i think there's a real sense that every element has to have a sound kind of imposed on it we've run out of time we've run out of time okay, i didn't even do i didn't even do my records of the week, right? My record of the week is, I was in a session the other day with a great artist called Nadia Kadik, and she said, have you heard this song, Fireball Whiskey by Angie McMahon? It's, it's, it's really great. Fireball Whiskey. You hear a song, you're just like, oh, yeah. that's, that's well, great. Well, if it was possible to, you know, license music on a, on a podcast, yeah. uh, we, would, uh, we would fade out the episode to that song. And my plug-in of the week. <laughs> And of course, okay, so I'm mixing like a lot of pop stuff. Now, I'm just going to put this out there because it's free. It's a free one and it's really good. It's called Wider by yeah. Polyverse. Is it Polyverse? Infected Mushroom Wider. It's free. Oh, I've heard of Infected Mushroom, yeah. Um, and it's uh, just a kind of widening plug-in 
Mm. Um, so it gives you more stereo feels. Um, but crucially, it's got like a bass roll off. So you can, and it collapses really beautifully to mono. You can get stuff really wide. Mm. When you collapse it to mono, it doesn't sound like weird and phasey. <laughs> I don't know how they've it done it. It doesn't sound like it's coming out the back of your head. Yeah, um, it's really good. Um, yeah. Dan, I, I, okay. I with, don't have a plug in of the week. So, come on, Dan. You know, next well, week, plug in of the week, song of the no, week. Well, well I'll tell you, out. No, I'll tell you what, um, I'll tell you what I have used though um the audio for this last week's podcast and this week's podcast yeah. is adobe enhance right okay which is a little bit scary might i say uh it's why is just, it scary because you just take a mic obviously we're, we're recording through some reasonable mics here um but there is uh well if i do this i mean this that won't even probably be in that's just going to be silence. There was me clapping my hands and there was an echo. We were in a quite reverberant space. Also, last week we had like some machinery churning away outside. You just audio in, it sits and thinks about it for a minute and then it hands it back to you and it's just all completely clean and leveled off. It's so thorough that even the spill of your voice into my mic got really sort of grabbed and turned up to the same volume as my... I wouldn't say it didn't sound perfect. Let's not big them up too much. They, no, no, they, they need to pay for any well, more I'm bigging not, up. Well, I'm not bigging it up. It's free. Oh, it's free. <laughs> it's free, yeah. Well, there you go. That's Dan's yeah. plug-in of the week. That's my plug-in of the week. Well, it's, got, it's terrifying, but, you know, yeah. we've got to turn these things around quickly, you know. It's <laughs> really fucking Okay, awful. cue the drums. Cue the music. The music's going to rise. And then Matt's drums. See you all. See you all next week, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, have a fantastic week.